What is up guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Day. On this channel, I talk about cybersecurity, cloud security, and other live stuff. Today's video, we're going to be investigating some AWS logs and responding to an incident. And this is a walkthrough of Cyber Defender's uh, lab, which is called Bucket. It's actually the only cloud security lab on this platform. And um, basically the scenario is as an incident responder, we're granting you access to AWS account cloud security as an IAM user. This account contains a copy of the logs during the time period of the incident and has the ability to assume the security role in the target account. So you can look around to spot the misconfigurations that allowed for this attack to happen. All right, so we have access to the credentials and also like what the environment looks like. And um, let's see, let's uh, try to log in and open like a new tab username security password is password so security and password is password so this is an intentional intentionally vulnerable environment and of course like the permissions are going to be set in such a way where by where we only have access to what uh they want us to have access to and uh basically we're going to be uh we're going to have access to uh the s3 bucket and this is where the cloud trail logs are stored i believe all right sweet so that's what we are looking for so let's uh, we're gonna be doing everything from the command line i already have a walkthrough of this on my website thisarworks.com and it's pretty much called responding to an incident by analyzing aws logs i'm gonna be using my walkthrough to kind of go through this lab all right so uh like i said we're gonna do everything from the command line and let's uh first of all configure a profile using this credentials so let's go to our home directory and let's do this AWS configure profile I'll actually use havoc so all right so let's copy the access key ID and paste that in here and then let's copy that secret access key paste that in here Awesome. Leave the default region. Uh, let's see, which region is this in? It's global, so it doesn't really matter. So let's just close that. Yeah. All right, cool. So that's all good. And let's get started. So the first question is, what is the full CLI command used to configure credentials? It's AWS configure, as we just saw. All right, what is the creation date of the bucket flaws to logs? So um, let's see. The creation date uh, for the bucket. So essentially, what we'll do is say AWS profile, specify our profile, right? That's because we want to use these credentials. And then we use S3 API and list buckets. So list buckets essentially just uh, basically shows us information about the buckets we have access to. So we see we only have one bucket here, and this is flaws two logs and this is the creation date we also see the owner and then the id so the creation date of the bucket is 2018 11 19 t 20 blah 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 so that is that and as we can see here that is the creation date of the bucket next question is what is the name of the first generated event according to time all right so the first thing i want to do is actually dump the content of the buckets into uh, the local directory. So I want to dump everything in the buckets, which are the logs into a local directory. So let's go into our desktop. All right, cool. So let's make a directory and we'll name that directory uh, flaws bucket. All right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say AWS profile havoc and then We'll say uh, S3 sync, which is basically the command for S3 to um, download the contents of a bucket. And then we'll specify uh, using the S3 prefix and then the name of the bucket, flaws2 logs. Okay, let's see what we're missing. AWS profile havoc, S3 sync, S3 colon slash flaws2. Okay, we didn't specify the okay the end the home the directory where it should be downloaded to so we actually have to specify the directory so let's do uh desktop flaws bucket all right there we go all right awesome so let's clear that and then let's go into that directory awesome so we see we have the aws logs here so we're gonna have to go um let's see let's go 
into it it's a very deep directory so there's like sub so many sub directories in it so what we're gonna do is let's go further 65 let's see cd yeah all the way there all right cool and we see we have these uh different log files so uh what we want to do is we want to uh, unzip unzip the JSON files because they're JSON files. So we're gonna do gun zip and then specify all of the files in this directory and then dot gz. So the asterisk means all the files dot gz. And then we list again, we'll see that they're now in full JSON format. Alright, cool. So next thing we want to do is let's view one of the files. So let's cat um any of these files uh let's see all right cool so if we cut any of these files we see that it's like really really hard to kind of identify anything in these files that's because they're in json format and we need uh like a json um we need a good way to kind of like look at them using like json in their json their actual json format so what we're gonna do is we're gonna install jq which i believe is jquery Oops. so jq and then all right so it's already installed and then we can use that we can just pipe that in our cat and then there we go so we have a really nice json format and we can see everything in a much better format so the question is asking us here it uh to uh find the creation date of the bucket flaws okay we've done that so the question is asking us what is the name of the first generated event according to time so what i did was i created a really like simple shell script to search all the files and filter by the event time so we're gonna quickly do that and Please do not make fun of my shell script, my bash, my bash script. Um, it's, you know. But uh, yeah, let's create a let's create a script. So we're gonna do nano um, event time sh, and then I'm just gonna walk through each line. So first of all, we'll start with dash bang bin bash, and then so say logs equals all the files dot json so all of the files in this directory dot json and then for l in this logs variable do it's a reminder so do echo so just to tell us that it's analyzing the logs analyzing that l again which is the logs and then cat the log file the log file and then let's pipe that give that jquery or jq so that we have a really nice view it's like in the proper json format and then want to grab event time so event time again do the same thing but this time same log file and then jq and this time you want to grab event name all right and then end that all right so simply what this is doing this specifies the variable for for logs and then uh, uh, uh because the logs are everything that have that dot json which is everything in the uh, in the current directory and then echo analyzing the log file and then um cat the log file and then pipe that using that jq to get a format and then grab the event time same thing for event name so not a pretty not the prettiest script but um it works so let's do that so let's run that script so we'll just do uh event oh so we have to modify the permission so shmod 777 it's too permissive but it's all good event time that sh all right awesome let's run that again awesome so we have a really nice view here so what we're looking for is the first event and the event time is 
2018 blah, blah blah but we're looking for the event name and the event name is actually a zoom row which is the answer for number three all right so that's that next question is what source ip address generated the event dated 2018 11 28 at 230320 uh once again i'm going to use a bash script to analyze this because it'll be too much work to just like go through each log or try to find each log because it'll be mostly guesswork so let's edit that script we already have so nano event time the sh and so this time we still leave the first uh, couple of lines the same so specify because we're using the same log files uh, but this time we're going to change this part of it and we'll clear this out and what we're doing here is this time we want to grab that specific time period that was mentioned so 2018 and then 11 28 t 23 colon 0 3 20 and want to specify whatever ip was there because they're looking for the ip address right so that should do Control x y and let's name this uh ip search at sh so file yes all right so let's run that script ip of course want to modify permissions Split to X and then IP. Awesome. So let's run that script. Awesome. So you can see here that we have a couple of IP addresses. It's like ignore this first part. But um we have so we have for so for each like uh account ID we have like a couple of IP addresses, which is basically just two IP addresses. So we see 34, 23, and we see 104, 102. But we're looking for the source IP that generated the event date dated on this particular date. So we're looking at 2018, 11, 28, and 23, oh, something. Let's see. 23, 03, 20. And we see... This IP address 34, 2, 34, and 1, 0, 4, 1, 0, 2, 2, 2, 1. And yeah, let's like the yeah, so there's the 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 IP addresses it's two it's actually two IP addresses, but um the answer um here is um 34, 234, 23612. I don't really know why, because like you know, multiple IP addresses, um, as observed, uh you know, generated events on that day, but um, that was the right answer, so that's fine. That's fine. Uh, next question is, which IP address does not belong to Amazon? So we can just search for these IP addresses um, using like a tool like, oh, it's not, it's using a tool, just do um, use IP. And there's several other tools you can use, but it's just my preference. And this one belongs to Amazon, so the other one must not belong to Amazon, right? Let's copy the other one. 104. Let's copy that and paste that here. All right, that's so the second one belongs to uh, Ekamai. So the right answer is the second one, which doesn't belong to Amazon. So next question is, which user issued the list bucket request? Once again, we're going to use, we're going to, repurpose that script we made earlier on and let's see what that's going to look like all right so basically nano ip all right so basically the same thing but again we're going to edit this part and we're going to change this to list buckets so we're just going to be using the grab you guys are going to be using the same thing but just to grab what specific like event name we're looking for so list buckets and then also cat l jq and then grab the username because the reason for we're looking for the user that issued a list bucket command so i want to see both parameters all right so 
Control X, and we'll save this as uh like bucket, like list bucket or something. So save modify buffer and this bucket dot sh yes and then uh mod x list buckets let's just add in the executable bit to that script all right so let's run that script um so list bucket dot sh awesome so we see we we're looking for the user that issued the list bucket request and here we see username level one with three all right there we go so we see the event name list buckets and username level three so uh the event name that has list buckets has this username level three and that is the user that issued the list bucket commands user level three final question is what is the first request issued by user level one so once again we're going to repurpose that shell script and we're going to do is we're going to this time we're grabbing for level one because that's what we're looking for oh so you grab for that username level one and then also for cat l oops jq and then grab so looking for multiple parameters here so username So we're look, we're looking for this and basically on basically a uh, base of how it would look in the JSON file. So it's gonna be username and then it's gonna be like this level one and then we'll close that and then we'll sort that and then cat again one more time. Once again, please do not make fun of my bash script. Um it's functional um and it gets me where i need to be hopefully i can improve my script and skills in the future but uh this looks like what we need and then yes all right looks like i didn't change the name but let's change the name of that to um uh user find uh actually let's change that to let's change user find to user find a shell all right and then add the executable bit to that user find the shell and then let's run that script user find shell awesome so <clears throat> we're looking for uh the first request issued by user level one and let's see what we find so we see somewhere right here user level one this is not the best view um as a matter of fact but um it's totally fine so let's scroll the way up and right here we see username level one uh there's an error message blah, blah blah but the very first event name we observe for this username is create log stream and uh, of course there are many other ones but this is the very first one we observe for username level one and yeah, that's our answer. So create log stream is the request observed for username level one. As you can see, um, the bash script, like, you know, didn't give us a really nice view, right? Of course, we wanted something that's like a lot more like concise, but um, it works. Um, hopefully I can improve my bash script over time, but um, uh, but it gives it gives me, um, you know, enough for me to, to work with and um, I can get a better better at it over time. So that's it for this challenge. This was definitely fun. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, you know, doing this investigation, also finding a way to like kind of automate like parsing uh, of like the log files to find specific information. So that was definitely cool. Um, that's it for today's video. If you like the video, please be sure to smash the like button, subscribe, and let me know if you want to see more lab videos like this. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.